Welcome to another special edition of Eye on Education. I'm Ed Leishish, your host, and as we've said, we are featuring the candidates for the Board of Education in the November 2nd election. And joining us now is Heather Raymond, who is the current president of the Board of Education in Nashua, having been elected to a four-year term back in 2017. And these four years, I imagine, have just flown by, Heather. <laughs> Welcome to today's program. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an interesting time. But before we get to that, for people who don't know you or may have seen your name or seen you on television, who is Heather Raymond? <laughs> That's an interesting question. Um, so I've been on the board for the last four years, president for the past three. Um, I'm also um, a mom in the community. I have two kids who go to Elm Street. Um, I'm currently um, a stay-at-home mom, but before that I was a social worker, uh, both here for DCYF in Nashua and also in New York, uh, where we came from on our journey, um, for Warren County, which is up in the Adirondacks. So if I remember correctly, you moved here in about 2010? 2010, yep. And what made you run for the school board uh, four years ago? So I uh, decided to start staying home in early 2017, and by June, I needed something more. Um, so I had been volunteering with uh, some community agencies, and um, I heard about the school board elections, and I thought that might be something that I could contribute to. Um, I'd been in all the schools at that point uh, when I was a social worker. Um, I'd been to a lot of IEP meetings. Um, I had a good knowledge of IEP um, requirements and special education law. And I thought, I think I can use this knowledge um, to help our community. Um, and this might be some service that was the in-between I was looking for. Uh, less than a part-time job, um, but more than just dabbling and volunteering. But it's become a full-time job. The last two years, it has been more than a part-time job. What do you feel are the three biggest issues facing the Board of Education going forward into the, uh, the next term? I, honestly, I think that a lot of the issues are interconnected. Um, so I would say our biggest issue is academics. Um, we've just had um, a series of assessments um, that the students have completed in September to try and figure out where students are at academically. Um, as they've come back to school after COVID, um, we've also been looking at their social emotional needs. Um, and I think those two are tied together. So I'm looking forward to seeing at the end of this month and the beginning of November, what supports our students and our staff need in order to be successful at um, making up for any lost time. And so I think um, making sure that they have those supports is gonna be the number one thing in January. Um, the number two thing is gonna be how do we pay for that? Uh, we have some CARES 2 Act funds still, um, and then there's Escher 2 and Escher 3 coming up. Um, so all of that is kind of number one. Um, number two is the superintendent search. Um, immediately in January, whomever is on the board will have superintendent interviews um, and will be responsible for choosing the next superintendent of schools. Um, and whomever that person is will then drive um, some of the work as far as how do we get our kids um, back to where they need to go. Uh, and then the third thing I would say is the middle schools project. Um, we are about halfway through. Fairgrounds is complete, um, on time, under budget. Um, we are about halfway through with the Penichuk project, and then we hope to break ground on the new middle school um, this spring. We've just had an agreement with the Conservation Commission um, on the plans to make sure that we are um, protecting natural wildlife habitats. And um, it was just approved at the zoning board on Tuesday night. Um, so, but all of those things are interconnected. Does that make sense? It does. Because the middle schools project is about providing our students with the most up-to-date learning environment to help them get where they need to be. Starting with the middle schools, the biggest challenge once the construction begins will be the redistricting. Never a popular uh, issue. Uh, in general terms, because you're gonna, if you're reelected, you're gonna have to vote on the, the, what's recommended from the committee and, uh, and Dr. Parker. And generally, what would you like to see in terms of how it's 
the students are redistributed? I'd like to see a heterogeneous mix of students. Um, so each school should offer the same experience going through middle school. With, they each should have their own personality, um, but we should have the same uh, demographic mix of students. Um, so that means um, a mix of um, students with IEPs and special needs, a mix of students from various socioeconomic backgrounds. Um, I don't want one school to be the rich school and one school to be the poor school, or one school um, to be um, the school that has all of the special needs students and another school to have no special needs students. It's very important to me that as we've updated the schools to have similar um, facilities, that we also update them to have similar demographics. Superintendent search. Hmm. Uh, you didn't have luck with the first one. Uh, the, uh, the top candidate withdrew. There was discussion about why not take the runner-up because the runner-up was a finalist. Uh, from the outside looking in, do you think the appearance of the board not being able to get together on a, a decision will hurt the potential field of applicants going forward? Maybe. Um, however, I would like to just uh, let everyone know that we aren't the only district that had that issue. Milford also was running a superintendent search at the same time and wasn't able to choose a candidate. Um, right now, there are eight districts in New Hampshire that uh, need new superintendents, that had superintendents leave over the, the course of COVID, who haven't been able to find a candidate that they were able to settle on yet. Um, I think that the field of superintendents was sparse in the spring, and we just didn't find a good match. Um, our runner-up candidate was a fabulous candidate. Um, he was clearly qualified um, to be a superintendent, but not necessarily here in New Hampshire. Um, I, I really liked him, um, but there are no unions in the area he was in Texas. Um, he hadn't uh, made a large budget before. Um, and so these are the kinds of things that we're looking for. Uh, since we have five union contracts that are being negotiated right now, that's something that we needed someone with that skill. We have a large budget, um, and we need someone who's able to um, look at our budget and make sure that um, we're spending money on the right kinds of things and that it's coming in uh, in a place where the taxpayers can afford it. Civility. The last year of in-person meetings have uh, certainly not been what Nashua is. And you've had to address those and deal with those most recently uh, calling into a, a meeting before you even considered uh, what you want to talk about. Uh, does that concern you going forward? Yes. Um, it concerns me greatly uh, uh, on a couple of levels. Um, we're here to serve. We need to do the business of the district. Um, so our role is to make sure that we are um, looking at what administration puts forward uh, for curriculum, for policy, um, you know, that we're working on in conjunction with them. Um, financial matters. We have a, uh, an Eagle Scout coming on this Tuesday's meeting who wants to present a project. Um, we need to give him the courtesy of listening to him respectfully and then voting on his proposal. And we can't do that if we're being heckled by the audience. Um, so this needs to change. Um, I've seen videos of other districts utilizing um, their local police to escort people out. We got to that point on this past Tuesday's meeting, um, but the people in the audience who were shouting had small children with them. I cannot imagine the trauma to a child of seeing the police escort their parent out or heaven forbid arrest someone for disrupting a public meeting. Um, so that's why I called for an adjournment because I felt like that was the the lesser of two bad choices. Um, so I'm hoping that um, anybody who's watching this or people who have watched the other videos um, take that into consideration when they come to the next meeting. We have two public comment periods. We've been extending our public comment periods to make sure that everybody who's there gets their three minutes. Um, and we don't want to take that away, certainly, 
Um, and we're just asking people to wait until that section on the agenda before they share their thoughts with us. Was it a difficult decision to decide to run again, given all of what, what you've been through with the COVID, the uh, civility issues? It was. Um, the first two years on the board were very different than the last two years. Um, and I found the first two years, um, we had our issues, ups and downs, um, but they were very productive. Um, I felt like I was really um, involved in a lot of different kinds of decision making. It wasn't just one thing. And then the last two years has just been COVID all the time. Um, I believe that we're on the downswing of COVID. And then if we keep um, safety measures in place, we can ensure that we stay on the downswing um, and that our students and staff stay safe. So I am, <laughs> I'm probably foolishly optimistic, but I'm optimistic that um, as COVID wanes, we can start to really talk about these things, the middle school project, academics, the superintendent search, uh, without all of that hanging over our head. Um, and having started those projects, I'd really like to see them through to completion. I think I still have more to offer on things that aren't COVID. Did it take a lot of convincing to your family? It took a lot of convincing um, to my husband, especially. Um, he's very concerned about the lack of decorum that we have seen. Um, he's very concerned about um, the, the hateful groups that have come to the meeting to protest outside. Um, I think as any spouse or loved one would be. Um, but I'm very fortunate that my family supports um, my choices and my need to be doing something outside of the house to give back to my community. Has your uh, training as a social worker helped you through this? <laughs> sometimes. Um, sometimes uh, I can remember to stay calm and focused. Um, and I think it has helped um, when I think about the impact this is having on, on children and students. Um, I think someone perhaps who didn't have the experiences as a social worker that I have might have had the police get involved escorting people out um, sooner than I have been willing to do. Um, I've gotten a lot of flack about not acting uh, more decisively on that. Um, but again, I'm trying to balance um, the impact of people yelling at me as a person with the impact of involving our police in that way. So one thing you'd like to say to our viewers today before we leave uh, on, on why they should vote for you. <laughs> Um, I guess I'm asking the voters to vote for me um, if they want to see a continuation of um, the safety measures that we're putting in place, a continuation of um, someone who really l listens to the facts as they're presented. I listen to our public health and our um, State Department of Health. Um, I listen to our um, educational um, consultants. I listen to our teachers and our administration, um, and I try and take all of the information that I'm getting and make a rational decision. Well, we want to wish you the best of luck, and thank you for being with us here today, Heather. Thank you so much for having me. This has been a special edition of Ion Education. Our guest has been Heather Raymond. She's currently the president of the Board of Education, and she's running for re-election in the November 2nd election. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.